Notice that the stiffest tree is most easily cracked, while the bamboo or willow survives by bending with the wind. Bruce Lee said it best, and we live it in the test. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 81 of Paradigm Shift Radio. Leading up to this episode, it was anticipated that our good friend Santos Bonacci, well-known truth seeker and astrologist, was going to be joining us to talk about our mysterious past and more. But, for some cosmic reason or another, he was unable to attend. Though, of course, there is still the prime chance that when the time is right, we will sync up with him again. So stay tuned for that episode. Yet nevertheless, we still managed to utilize the opportunity to generate some excellent conversation and express some key ideas in this episode. As the episode evolved, much of it continued to revolve around the ever-popular topic of dream exploration. So if you are human and are interested in expanding your perception of ideas about dreams, then you'll enjoy the insight that this episode has to offer. Paradigm Shift is not just a project, it's an ongoing story that we invite anyone to be a part of. So more than just listening to the show, be sure to go out there and continue the conversations and plant those thought seeds with the people where you are. Tell a few friends about this global project to help shift consciousness, join us again for future episodes, create a Paradigm Shift community where you are, write down your dreams, and enjoy the flow. One love. Where were you? And what were you doing yesterday? Okay. Now, where were you and what were you doing a week ago? All right. Now, where were you and what were you doing a month ago, two months, a year ago, a hundred years, a thousand years? Where were we and what the heck were we doing over quite some time ago in our mysterious past? The fact that we can barely remember time within a certain time frame that you think we would be able to really brings into question just what it is that we can actually point to and say for certainty is what really happened within the time period that occurred many, 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 many eons ago. But with all the records out there, there's a lot of hints pointing towards something. And tonight on Paradigm Shift Radio, we're going to be working with what we got to be able to connect some of the dots, to be able to help shed some light on our mysterious past, to be able to help get a better perspective on who we are now and where we are going within this shifty age that we live in. <laughs> this is Skull Babylon. You are tuned in for another exciting episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. And on tonight's episode, as I said, we're going to be talking about our mysterious past. But uh, those of you who are tuned in early at the show, uh, but prior to the show officially starting, which was just about 30 seconds ago, you know that the plan is for our good buddy Santos Bonacci to be joining us on the show tonight. But as things are in some crazy cosmic turn of events uh i haven't actually heard from him on facebook and uh that may be because he's actually still involved with uh doing a recording of another radio show that he does sometimes that often rolls over and i'm actually going to give a shout out to them because it's still stuff that you are going to want to check out and they got a lot of past episodes and santos is a guy full of brilliant knowledge and insight and you can check out that show at critical mass radio on blog talk so blogtalk.com slash critical mass radio and also at critical mass uk. so shout out to them because they're doing some work on their own shift in consciousness but uh you won't be able to listen to that show now as i said it's uh it's it's past the rollover point but he may still be involved with that but in the meantime what we're going to be doing tonight is that we're going to be continuing to con- to get into the conversation. Myself and a few of my buddies are going to be bringing Noah on in the not-too-distant future, and we're going to be talking about the topic of our mysterious past. And uh, if Santos shows up, then we shall roll with that. And if for whatever whatever happens, we're going to make the most of it. That is kind of what you got to do in life. And uh, we here at Paradigm Shift Radio are, uh, are, are you know, it's not, it's not uncommon to be able to adapt and overcome, and that's really what we're going to do here tonight. So again, shout out to everybody who's joining us in the live chat, and if you want to get involved in the conversation with tonight's show about our mysterious past, if you have some insight on the topics of like ancient Egypt and uh, Atlantis and the, la- and the lost continent of Mu, and, and even ideas of you know like Gnosticism, like the idea that a lot of these religions, a lot of these spiritual teachings from across the world are fundamentally pointing towards a single truth truth is kind of the idea that that I'm really interested in and then sort of figuring out what is that truth what is it that they're talking about so again I know we got some really insightful people with a lot to share who would love to be involved with this episode I would love them to be involved in this episode so we are looking for them to be able to call in as soon as possible really at this point and we'll be able to get the get the show rolling and uh 
worst case scenario, this just turns into sort of a roundtable discussion topic, which is you know something that we do here on Paradigm Ship Radio. So while we're waiting for those people to call in, and before we bring on my buddy Noah, I just want to, of course, tell you to check out Santos's work. If <laughs> just because he's a guy who you definitely want to learn more about, and you can check out his stuff at UniversalTruth.com and just run some searches on his name in YouTube. That's Santos Bonacci, and uh, you can just spell that S A N T O S B O N A. CCI, and uh, there's a lot of presentations he's done. He's been researching stuff for like over 30 years, and it's really impressive. And it, it, outside of this radio show, there's just a ton of information of him already out there online. And uh, we'll have him on the radio show eventually when the time is right. I promise you that. But until then, we are just rolling with it, making the most of it, not getting flustered by the circumstances. Because, of course, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you guys here with me to be able to co-create this, this experience, this media, this ongoing story of our documentation of spiritual beings in human form, so to speak. So a little overview in terms of this project for those of you who aren't familiar and those of you who might be tuning in for the first time. ParadigmShiftCentral.com is the main website that you want to check out. And Paradigm Shift Radio is just a branch of this global project that began about five years ago by myself and some of my buddies as a single club in my nearby college that I was attending. And the main focus, in addition to the radio show, is focusing and encouraging people to create physical paradigm shift communities where they are. And of course, I'm with Paradigm Shift London, Ontario, Canada, and you can join me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift London. And if you're in the London area, big shout out to you guys. And the last meeting that we had with Paradigm Shift London meeting, we actually put up a video of that. You can find that through the main website. And you can also find it through the Facebook page and as well as on Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central, which is where you'll find all sorts of awesome community created videos. And we are always looking for more content creators. This show, this project is a platform for us to be able to share our voice. So if you've got videos that you want to share, join us, message us, message us, and we'll be able to help get the information out there for you. But the last meeting that we had at Paradigm Shift London was, was really a milestone, I must say, and the reason why I'm sharing this for you is not simply to just stall and kill time until Santos theoretically shows up, but... (laughs) But it's actually to share with you the success of what what this community has accomplished and what it has created. The paradigm shift community, like I said, it started as something very small, as all things do. All things must all all big things begin small. Uh, actually, I think that's a that's a quote from Prometheus. <laughs> but I mean, it's so true, of course, right? And the community itself, now every week there are new faces out. And what we do, we have these open conversation circles and meditation, and we're just bouncing ideas around. I help facilitate it. One of the simple ways how we facilitate conversations is when you have a group of large people, it can get sometimes, you know, you don't want people shouting over top of each other. So this is a quick tip in terms of facilitating community with a small group, even with like five people, is to when you have a point, if you want to have a point and somebody else is talking, instead of raising your hand up, put your hand out, hold your hand out in front of you, palm up to the, towards the sky as if you're holding something in your hand and you have something to offer them. And then those people will be able to see that you have something to add and then we can pass the conversation towards that person. And then it, it just sort of, it's a lot more just very holistic. It's very humble. You know, nobody's trying to compete with anybody and it's a big thing about patience and listening. And and again, the community meeting that we had in London was really good. A lot, lot of awesome people out there. And again, we encourage you to create a paradigm shift community where you are and you can find the links through the main website or go directly to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash start a community get that started and one of the things that we want to be able to help people use to get started are of course the shift buttons and i will mention this now we will be giving out one batch of free shift buttons later in the episode and the and the shift buttons are tools that we can use to help evoke consciousness evoke synchronicity connect with people they all have consciousness shifting symbols on them like the yin yang like the eye of all like the flower of life just as some examples and they have a website for paradigmshiftcentral.com and you give those to people and they connect them to the project and it helps build community and last week I was out giving free hugs downtown and giving people shift buttons for the people who came up and gave me a hug and connecting those people with the community and again a lot of people have heard me talk about this stuff before so I'm not going to spend too much time on it but if you want to get into the draw for the free shift button send a message to www.facebook.com slash paradigmshiftradio and tell us that you would like to be entered into the draw and just tell us a little bit about how you found the show, what you think of it, and uh, what you would do with the buttons. And the other part of it is that if we get some donations to the GoFundMe account at GoFundMe.com slash Paradigm Shift Central, then we will be giving out additional batches of free buttons during the show. So even if it's just a minimum donation of just $5, you can do that and 
send it to gofundme.com slash paradigm shift central. And again, more buttons by the end of the show. And last thing I will mention is that there will be some information about the sequel for Journey to a City coming out in the near future. I'm going to be getting more into the promo side for the campaign, the funding campaign for that. And the Journey to a City is a full-length movie. You can check it out at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash JTL if you haven't. Um, I mean, I guess I really didn't introduce myself, but for myself, Skull Babylon, you can add me at Skull Babylon on Facebook, and uh, I'm a filmmaker, that's what I was in school for at the time, creating a lot of media is a big element of this project, and Paradigm, at Paradigm Shift Central, you can find the Journey to Lucidity movie, and uh, that's the most recent movie, and we're going to do the sequel in April, and you can donate through that link, you can also watch the full movie, and you can also get the DVD, and uh very last thing I will say is that if you enjoy this show, <laughs> if you enjoy this show, please consider signing up for a micro contribution as a monthly supporter for only one dollar a week or four dollars a month to help support the ongoing creation of conscious media. So there, now that I've done that, I'm going to bring on my buddy Noah, and then also we're going to bring on a couple other buddies, and uh, yeah, we're going to get things rolling with here. I know my buddy's got some really interesting insight, and uh, we'll just make the most of this. And of course, if you want to get involved with this conversation, then please call into the show, and uh, we'll be bringing some people on in and out, and we'll just. Uh, be playing it by ear and of course check out all the past episodes of paradigmshiftradio.com or sorry of paradigmshiftradio at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash psr so there we go all right everybody's brought up to speed now let's get into the meat of things so all right <laughs> okay so i'm going to bring noah back onto the air and uh in the meantime i'm just going to double check and see if uh any getting any word from santo so keep an eye on that and i'll keep you guys updated you'll be the first to know trust me but let's bring on our buddy noah noah is one of our buddies from paradigm shift london and uh it'll be good to hear from him again so, Noah, if you're ready, we're bringing you back on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Yo, brother. Hello. How you doing? Hello, hello. Good, man. Good. How, how, are, how are you doing, Noah? I, I am happy to be back on. I haven't been too involved in Paradigm Shift last little while, but uh, always uh, having my shift buttons on me and, and continually generating the conversation with people as I move through my day, if I can. So always doing something, but more formally, and I haven't been at any of the meetings recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it'll it'll be good to to see you out of the meetings again. You always bring a nice energy to the circle, and uh, I really like where you're coming from. I mean, you, you you yourself, you're coming from I mean the Jewish side of things with with that being your upbringing, and that's something that I'm actually pretty interested in, in getting a little insight from you tonight is what you can provide in terms of some of the teachings from like the Kabbalistic end of things about our mysterious past. But uh, yeah, really, really just sort of like getting into this. It's, it's I almost got to hold back because there's some questions. I wanted to get into here and I wanted to be able to like save them for Santos but I'll just sort of like put it out there to just let you get the ball rolling I mean even when you think of the topic our mysterious past what comes to mind with you and what start what gears start turning for you uh honestly instantly I've just been last couple of years been a, a very very just on a path I can't really explain with with the seeking um and started out not very, uh, in terms of not very much connected to my own tradition and my own ancestry. Um, but I, I think for, for many people, I don't know if many people have a little bit of their own prejudices and misunderstandings about religion and spirituality that, for, especially from a Judeo-Christian perspective, uh, simply because uh, the English interpretation of the Bible is very, is very superficial. Um, you basically don't get, really understand anything that's going on. And so for me, I kind of abandoned all of my own spiritual traditions and started seeking more towards the experiential, mystical sides of the Eastern traditions. Um, but it wasn't very long uh, into the process that I sort of was both being guided in many ways through different experiences, right back to my own uh, mystical teachings. And so for me, I think the, the number one reason that happened is because of my ancestry, um, my DNA is completely comprised of, you know, it's a form of, a lot of it is formulated through the people that have lived on that have created me. And so when I think of the topic of reincarnation, uh, I'm less interested in the actual metaphysical theory, oh, I'm a reincarnation of this, this person or this person or this animal or something. I more look at the very basic sense that I'm just a reincarnation of my family. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. just another link in another manifestation of an infinitely ongoing uh, creation that is my ancestors. And so from a Jewish perspective, what really has fascinated me for so long, especially in these last couple of years, is just how I feel like I'm being completely guided 
and how the teachings that I am learning and engaging in, which are just is from another dimension, uh, but are just amazingly practical for this world, how I feel that it's already it's already somehow in me, and I already somehow know. Uh, and mm-hmm. I know Skull talks a lot about how, you know, it, it's all about re-remembering. And it's, it's, it's kind of like everything I learn is deja vu. And, uh, and so more and more I've been looking into ancestries and the connection of DNA. And very recently, up until very recently, I just saw an article on the BBC. Uh, it came out, they did an animal study. And basically the conclusion, which I can read to you from, directly from the article, is that behavior can be affected by events in previous generations which, which have been passed on through a form of genetic memory. Uh, so basically, what it's talking about is how certain memories that have happened to our ancestors in the past, A, have, like sh- have shaped the way that we are, tendencies that we potentially have, and also, in a way, they are encoded inside of us. Uh, so that opens up a whole can of worms as to what is our mysterious past, because we all share, obviously, when you get down to it at some point, uh, an interconnected root. Uh, mm-hmm. But even beyond that, in our own unique traditions, in our own unique lineages, what is who who lives through us? Um, and I don't even mean that in the terms of like a reincarnation of the of the soul. I mean more like from the genetical aspect. Who lived in my my line of DNA? And it's it's something that has really encapsulated me for a very long time. And and we can discuss this too. And I can kind of share with you uh, some of the theories I have, especially related to to revelation. Um, but if there's anything you want to add in for now, that that'd be great, Skull. Yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll bounce around on on, on a few ideas, no doubt about that. And uh, yeah, like I. Uh... <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Santos' work, and I, I, I could almost, like, say, like, oh, well, Santos has said this about this. Um, but one of the things that he has said, you know, and, like, he is a really big proponent of the idea that, like, literally we are all one. And he sort of gives that simple analogy of the branch thing. And, I mean, even when you look at, like, our family tree, like, the fact that it's called a family tree is not a coincidence. And the fact that, you know, each branch, each leaf on a branch may appear to be separate, yet when you root those branches back, it goes down back to a single branch, and then it goes back down all the way to a single source, all the way down to, like, that original toroidal field within, like, the very root of the tree. But, I mean, everybody listening to this point is pretty well aware of this. Uh, Some of those ideas, one of the things that I really wanted to get into, uh, again, with Santos here, uh, but I really wanted to get into, like, the very far back mysterious past. Like, I'm talking, you know, like, like us as, like, consciousness like, even theoretically, like, pre-Earth, so to speak, or, or, you know, even getting into the ideas of, like, way back, you know, talking about, like, things like Atlantis and and Mu, uh, I mean, those are sort of expected, but, yeah, just sort of, like, how we as consciousness sort of chose to come into this experience. I was curious to ask him about that, but uh, we'll, we'll sort of float those ideas out there, but we also have our good buddy Justin, who is another partner within the Paradigm Shift London community, and, and I'm going to bring him on, and, and I'm very curious to, to to see what he would want to bring to the topic but i do want to sort of narrow things in in terms of you know like for now let's just sort of like narrow in on like the egyptian culture unless unless uh justin has something to say about like atlantis and the, and the lost continent of Mu, which uh, as just you know information goes are theoretical ideas that like before they, they existed in prior ages where man and consciousness has risen and then co- and then fallen and then risen and fallen it, it's is part of that cosmic breath that we as consciousness go through and civilizations have built themselves up and then destroyed themselves and within the lost continent of Mu this happened and then they had you know like pyramid and solar technology and all sorts of stuff and then the next one easy no stop <laughs> like scratching the mic there <laughs> But uh, yeah, and then, and then sorry, and then the next one would have been Atlantis, which would have been a very similar story. And then you get all these ideas of you know like uh, stories of like Thoth and, and Hermes and, and these teachers reincarnating again to to share these these interesting stories. And uh, I will just say there's a very interesting uh, movie that I posted, an anime movie that I posted, and, and you can run a YouTube search on this, or I'll post a link afterwards in the YouTube version of this episode. But it's the uh, it's called The Laws of the Sun, and it's an incredible anime movie that really gets like hyperdimensional and, and it talks all about this which is very coincidental because we decided on the topic for the show and then I coincidentally came across that link but again the laws of the sun look that up on YouTube and you should be able to find the full movie for it but I'm going to bring Justin on and then we're going to see what he has to add to the conversation and, and I'm sure uh, yeah it, get, brace yourselves because we're going to get into some topic probably probably 
about dream exploration and astral projection and just sort of like all these sort of very, very interesting ideas because uh, theoretically, you know, a lot of these ancient cultures are, their teachings are sort of pointing towards that idea. They are trying to remind us that we are more than our physical body, that we are not simply from Earth, but we come from somewhere else. You know, that's something that I always talk about. Like, we literally, you know, where we are when we dream, that's closer to where we are from. And then we came here. We came into this physical dimension. We are a soul with a body. We are not a body just with a soul. You know, we've all sort of heard that. But again, I'm going to bring Justin on and and give him an opportunity to add to this conversation. So, Justin, if you're ready, I'm going to bring you back on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello. Yo, Justin. Hey, Justin. Can you hear me, Internet? Yeah, yes, the Internet can hear. How you doing, man? Noah, Noah, Justin. how you doing? What's up, brother? <laughs> oh, shit. It's, it's, it's good to hear you. Good to hear you, too. Yeah, <sighs> good stuff, man. Yeah, cool, how you cool. doing? Good. I just I just uh, finished uh, something for the day, and uh, Brendan invited me on, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, right. I've just been uh, listening to you guys, and. It's been interesting so far. I don't, I don't feel like I have much to add at this point. I'll probably just be passive and listening until I feel um, necessary to say something. But um, cool. yeah, interesting, interesting. I I saw that movie you posted, Brennan, that anime movie. Lots of the sun, yeah. It's trippy, man. I'm not gonna lie. I actually cried. It was so <laughs> trippy. Really, eh? Oh yeah, man, man, it, it does. Okay. I guess it's, it was beautiful. It really was. Yeah. Well, Justin, I, I mean, I I, do, I would like to be able to just uh, help give you an opportunity to get into some stuff. But I mean, like I said, even just narrowing this down towards like ancient Egypt, when you think of ancient Egypt, based on the stuff that you've come across, like what do you sort of get out of it? Or what do you think people should like get out of the idea of ancient Egypt? Um, I think their mythology is, is really profound, but like studying any type of mythology, like uh Noah was talking about the uh you know the bible or the tanakh and then uh, i i've been studying a lot of buddhist mythology as well that's kind of why i i love the anime so much it it had a heavy B- buddhist influence but um yeah the egyptian mythology is is just exactly the same like it's the exact same story they're expressing you know for a specific time in a specific place for a specific culture for those specific people to kind of gain and learn wisdom and i think that yeah the egyptian and if you know anything about the egyptian mythology and their hieroglyphs and how they break down and how they read them it's vastly profound yeah yeah but as far as like their history uh, or like what happened to the physical people i can't say much to be honest because honestly i don't know i'm and you know i'm a really skeptic uh individual i always come from the perspective of uh uh, skepticism in order to prove something first not to mean that i you know don't believe in in some things but mm-hmm. yeah i don't know it's uh that's, i don't want to get too far deep into it right now at the start <laughs> well you're we're more than welcome to later because i mean that's uh you know i think a lot of people they they, they that's, that's what they like getting into they like that sort of stuff that they can go back and listen to more than once uh noah you had something to add there go ahead yeah well i mean i can kind of like from from my perspective, I'm not really sure the relatedness between the Egyptian uh, story and the ancient Egyptian, like if those are in the similar time periods or whatnot. Um, but for me, and what Justin was kind of alluding to, which is which is the mythology, mythological aspect, and and what's real and what's not. And for me, um, though it is not exactly what drives my interest in Kabbalah and the wisdom embodied within the Torah, um, it is very interesting that. That there, is, that there are many different ways to be actually be able to track down whether or not what happened at Mount Sinai happened. Uh, and, and when I say Mount Sinai, I'm referring to the, uh, the, the, the vast difference. If people have ever really studied Revelation stories, um, you see some in the Buddhist tradition. You see how a man named Siddhartha Gautama about 2,500 years ago had an enlightenment experience, and he then shared the teachings that allowed him to have that experience. And his, the whole Buddhist tradition is alluding to following the teachings of the Buddha. Um, and in the Christian tradition, it's Jesus. In the Islamic tradition, it's Muhammad. Um, and so a lot of what actually comprises the world's main religions are, 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 are deviate from a person's experience that he imparts and teaches for someone else to have the experience of. But the big difference in the actual the, the Jewish revelation story 
And what's so interesting is that there isn't a one period in Jewish history that's actually fragmented and broken. So there is historical, like there is a history that can really date back both orally and through like, like there's, a, I can, sh I can send and, and, and show you some really interesting uh, like lineages that date back all the way back to the times of, of the biblical times. And what's so fascinating about it is that the revelation story does not claim to have, you know, Moses having a revelation. What it really said was that an entire multitude of people, 600,000 to be exact, had a revelation at the exact same time. Uh, and it was such a powerful prophetic revelation. And, and the mystics in, in, in the Torah um, underwent extremely strong and powerful um, meditative disciplines to actually receive prophecy. Uh, but that's a whole other discussion. But, but I was really alluding to is that in, in terms of mythology or not, uh, the way I look at the Kabbalah, it's, it's almost like it, it, there really is an interconnectivity um, between m myself living today and the experience of my ancestors 3,300 years ago. Because, so to speak, I, uh, my, my lineage, if, if I'm Jewish, unless there was some sort of uh, conversion in between, there really does exist through the oral tradition, which is, which is what most people don't know about. Uh, there's an oral tradition that has existed in, in complete, complete uh, continuation for about 3,300 years, since the time of, of Moses in the written book. Uh, so what I find so fascinating, which relates to ancestry, is that this experience, which was described as like such a profound experience of oneness and, and revelation that we can't really understand with our rational minds. Um, but many mystics have described it over the years. But the clarity of the experience and the unity of the experience at a single moment, at a single time, that was such so powerful that the people basically almost died. Thank God they didn't. But um, it was such a, such a powerful experience. And the reason why I relate this to ancestry is because, so to speak, Within my, own, within my own DNA and within my own ancestry, that memory has the potential to still be existing. And since time is only appearing to be linear in the, in the dimensions of time and space in this physical world, that experience is almost like simultaneously happening through me in ways that I can't comprehend. And so a lot of times, this is why I feel so... Uh, uh, serendipitous when I study certain things and I learn certain things because in, in my belief, and, and we can talk more about it, but just that I, I do have this, this this belief which is backed up by a lot of different uh, kind of sources and, and, and rationality that somehow that experience is actually encoded in my memory. If it happens to, a, to an ancestor that I'm connected to, then even if it's a small fragment of my DNA, and as I showed with that article before, that there is that possibility that the, the memory is actually encapsulated within me, um, which explains a whole whack of different things. But I'm just wondering what you guys actually think about the potential to, for some sort of incredible revelatory experience that maybe what an ancestor has had or maybe somebody in the bloodline or of some sort and how that can affect one's current consciousness, if anything. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I was actually just reading... Uh... Uh, scientific article uh, that was kind of going over a very kind of how like uh, events in our life or like actions we choose uh, the habitual nature of ourself and our genealogy uh, is affected by our actions and our choice like uh, previously it was it was thought that um, it was kind of like predetermined and we have no control over it but I think it's so interesting uh, the idea that you know we have like this raw clay in our hands, the DNA, and we can shape it as, as we so please. But like when we create offspring, it can it it's almost like taking a photo. It takes an exact replica of that part of us in that moment at that stage of our life, and like kind of uh, it offshoots from there. So it's, I think that's a really interesting idea, kind of what you were you were explaining how like you could say like metaphysically this energy is like going through time. Or like literally, you say scientifically, your your gene your genealogy is perpetuating all the way through your entire lineage, and yeah, I don't really know what my uh, lineage is, but through the type of uh, wisdom schools and stuff I've been uh, exploring, it seems really interesting. I, I think that like from my own experiences, it's hard to say like something ob not subjective, like something that's objective and I can say is true for myself. 
I, I would say the only way I can view things or experience things from my previous line, lineage, um, as, since I don't have text uh, available to me, like you have such a privilege, um, I through writing down my own text. Uh, I write down my dreams every morning when I wake up, and uh, it's almost like, a, you know, <laughs> it, I don't want to sound too. Uh, um, I'll just say it's like you know you're writing your own Bible almost. Uh, but it's of yourself. It's of your psyche. It's of like your your deep uh, subconscious mind. You're kind of like, uh, you know, most people they just see the surface of the water. They're you know they go through everyday life. Maybe they wake up and they you know remember a dream or two, forget it later on. But like to be able to stick your face into that surface and like kind of look around beneath the surface, I think that that's a really valuable asset. Like there have been times I've had dreams that took place in like different eras. I guess you could say of uh, like different period time periods or like just some weird ones that like, you know, are not even anywhere close to, to uh, would be considered like this society. So, yeah, I think it's interesting, like the possibility, you know, and people say that that's what you're doing. Although, um, you know, who knows really what it is. Well, yeah, I mean, for sure. Cause it, especially like, in the Jewish tradition, there's a belief that dreams are actually a 60th of prophecy. So within the chaos of the mind and it's, it's kind of so, like habitual, like whatever it's seen, whatever it's experienced, whatever kind of is going on in the physical world that is clouding over the experience, that on a much deeper level, there are certain dreams that although the visual representation and the symbolic representation might be of things that one has seen or appear to be certain places and contexts that apply to this century, that through those means there are messages being transmitted. Um, and I've kind of spoken about this before with Brendan, maybe even on the air, but I, I, I ext have extreme value towards, towards dream and the DNA exploration. And me and Brendan were kind of shooting around that idea that the, the, ancest the ancestry, like, which is part of your DNA, is also existing within your subconscious and unconscious. And in fact, the 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 one the more that one is is in tune to to kind of their dream state their subconscious through meditation and dreaming that the more that these kind of messages and symbols can become aware uh, and because they're not as much attuned and, and paying attention to what's going on on the outside um, so for me I mean I've there's been certain times where I've written down certain teachings that I've felt like I've received that I in a way didn't even know about and I've even spoken about how I've been in a kind of like a a chamber of sorts, like this room that kind of looked like my room but wasn't, that had like very large Hebrew books in them. Um, whether or not there was actually anything to learn in them, I'm not sure. But I know that the more I explored the dream state, the more there are things that I could find out about, an about my ancestry and about anyone's ancestry kind of through their dreams. Mm -hmm. it, it, and this is new stuff. It's very, Easy on the type you know, of many people uh, sure. have, a, have a strong kind of pull towards dreams and, and over the centuries we just haven't had the education you know in our yeah. in our modern world in our modern we never went to school and talked about dreams we kind of never had our own formulations of what they were uh we yeah. kind of just were told that they're meaningless in so many ways so but that's not true historically um yeah well people, that's what i was about to say like i mean yeah, even yeah. you know sort of branching the conversation here like that's something in terms of our mysterious past that I'm particularly interested in is like what was the relationship with dreams that these ancient cultures had because I mean at some point you know I, I would think that you're right like the way how we dream today is not the way how we used to dream and and I think there probably was like a stronger spiritual connection to the idea that like you know like you do this work like in the astral at night and then you come into the physical during the day and continue to, to propagate that evolution and stuff like that but at the same time I don't know maybe maybe like consciousness sort of like programmed itself to be naive of the fact that it, it, it had that, those dream experiences like I don't know maybe people were less likely to remember the dreams but either way in order for us to develop a dream relationship it does con it does require a degree of consistency and, and of willpower absolutely now uh, guys sorry no I don't want to cut you off but I do just want to keep things rolling along here because we got yeah. we got a couple other callers uh, who, who would like to be brought onto the air so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that we got a caller who's calling in from error code 513, and then we got somebody else on Skype under the Skype name True Wisdom Lover. So I'm interested to get both of them on the air, and then we'll just sort of turn this into a group conversation circle. And uh, 
again, at this point, boys and girls, just a little update on the Santos situation. I uh, I did send him a message over Skype, and I know another friend of ours did as well. And I know I got a couple people in the live chat putting out a psychic chant to try and get Santos nudged in and onto the air. But uh, we're really just working with what we got, and it's, it's up to him. I mean, you know, if... If the, if this if it doesn't work out for whatever reason, then I'm sure we'll be able to mitigate and I'm sure we'll be able to have him on for a full episode a little bit later into the series. But for now, we're going to con- continue with what we got. I mean, I'm still having fun. We're still getting a lot of practice out of this. This is, again, this is practice being able to talk about. And, uh, yeah, like, really just quick insights of my own. Like, I think that is, um, you know, when we look at all these different religions, they are sort of pointing towards, like, some sort of definite idea that there is, like, more to this reality than the physical like there is that connection and stuff like that and I'm really interested on the Egyptian side of even like the the idea of Ra and and what that is and what that is like today sort of thing but uh, I'm not an expert is is kind of what I'm saying so I mean if other people got some insight on that uh, feel free to bring it to the table that's really what this is all about this is like a digital version of the physical conversations that Paradigm Shift communities have so we're going to bring on a caller from area code 513 and we're going to continue the conversation and of course big shout out to uh 52 users in the live chat so uh santos or no santos we're still uh still getting a lot out of this episode so thank you to everybody for helping co-create it so call from air code 513 bringing you live on a paradigm shift radio here we go hello caller hello. can you hear us yes can i can you hear me yes we can caller sweet all right um Perfect. what is your name where are you calling from and My what would you like to bring to the show awesome okay. uh, i'm calling from toronto uh toronto canada Nice. And uh, I haven't listened to you guys' show in a long time, so you know I just I saw the uh, actually on Instagram, and then I was like, you know what, this seems like tonight I'll tune in, and uh, I'm just away for the weekend at my cottage, so nice. it's like perfect to come back and you know kind of join in on the conversation and that. So cool, man. Cool. Well, happy happy to have you here, <laughs> yeah, hope Toronto. You- not you Thank know you. just a stone's throw stone throw away from from London. So you know if you're ever in London, feel free to swing by some of our Paradigm Shift London's meetings, man. Love to have you there. But but again, yeah, awesome. Yeah, what, what would you like to uh, what would you like to bring to the show tonight? Uh, well, I just like just a little touch base on uh, dreams and like what I experience. I find I do. Um, I have dreams from all sides. You know, some are seem really positive, some negative, but I always tend to know that, you know, whatever I'm experiencing, I'm always taking something from it. Um, and what I like to tell people, you know, maybe at the time you don't understand your dream, it may take, you know, a couple of days or even a couple of months for you to get the uh, information that was kind of like in there in the subconscious part of the dream um, to, and kind of, you know, come to the service and maybe understand what it's about because I get a lot of people, um, you know, even though people I know say, you know, like I've had these crazy dreams and I don't really understand them. And I say, well, you know, and this is from my experience. I say, well, like, don't worry about it. You know, don't fret over the dream because when the time's right, the information that you needed to know or, you know, you're remembering will come to you. Yeah. yeah. Justin, Justin, do you want to throw in something on there? Yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely agree. Um, I didn't catch your name, but I would agree with you. Um, from my own experience, actually, the very first dream I ever wrote <clears> down, um, which was a quite a few years ago. Um, I didn't understand it until about like two years later. And then uh, I understood exactly what it meant without any like grain of uh, doubt in my mind. It was actually a really um, transformative thing to experience to see like how like immediately the message was being expressed. And it seemed like a very simple, like um, useless dream at the time that was just like, oh, whatever, you know, that happened. But then, like, two years later, something happened in my life and it was directly correlating to it, and it was actually quite profound to, to re- recognize. I would definitely agree with you, you know, at times. Um, we definitely write off or um, disregard the the fact that, you know, information is coming in in a not-so-linear way, um, mm-hmm. more of an intuitive yeah. way also. Exactly, and I think just, like, we're always taking in so much information where it's consciously, subconsciously, you know, it takes a while for that to kind of break down and decode the information we're getting it before we can really understand it and embrace it. You know, and I've, I've had the same kind of experiences with, you know, what months went by and then something else happened and that kind of triggered that information and that's the time you really needed it, right? So. Am I still on the air? No, yeah, yeah you are. Finding. 
Oh. Yeah, you're grinding <laughs> something there. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. No, I was just going to say, about, especially about the interpretation of dreaming, um, because uh, uh, there's, a, there's certain ancient kind of teachings about this that, in the tradition, that basically that how you interpret the dream also is going to affect how the dream manifests in your life. And so you should always, if you're going to tell a dream to somebody and you want to share it, something bothers you, you should always get someone to interpret it positively. Um, because it actually, like, because dreams can be interpreted and to mean so many different things. Um, and the more you kind of interpret it in a positive way, I guess, it, in a weird kind of way, it can actually affect the result or the manifestation of what that dream means to you, both in your personal life and then how it actually affects, you know, the world at large. Um, but I was also interested in, in your experiences, if anybody's ever had a dream where they've shared with somebody, because um, I've had that experience um, where I've been in a, and I'm not going to go into any of this, who this person is or whatever, but I was meeting up with them the next day, and when I saw them, I didn't want to tell them that they were in my dream because I just didn't feel comfortable. And they kind of, the second I got into the car, this person was just kind of like, so do you remember me in your dream yesterday? And he was laughing, and I was just like, what? Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. That's, uh... like, that's kind of like, whoa. And so um, I'm not sure if that was like meeting in the astral realms or something, but I don't know if anyone has had that experience, or maybe they've had it, but they just haven't shared with their friends when they've had a dream about them that like they just don't know. Um, yeah. And so that kind of alludes to the fact that the dream world might not be so subjective in one sense. It really depends. Yeah. Like, it depends on... Okay, you go ahead. Uh, no, well, all I was going to add in is, right, like, well, I've heard from many people to say, you know, if, if sometimes you can't sleep at night, uh, you know, that may be because you're in somebody else's dream. And, and that's really cool that you say that. My own experience I had was that I had this really, uh, this dream that I just, I woke up the next day kind of confused and I didn't know how to, you know, come across it and, and what was I could take from that. So I just kind of let it be. And I saw my friend the next day. And, um, like, you know, this this goes into a bit of horoscope stuff too, but he handed me the newspaper. Um, I didn't see him. I didn't tell him anything about it. I was in my way home. And I he, for some reason, he's with his other buddy and said, you know, let's go with this route. And, then, and the reason was because he actually saw me on his way home as well and handed me the newspaper and, like, what my horoscope said about, like, what it actually said related directly to my, my dream. It was just the feeling I had through my body, that sensation of, like, it was, just, it was really nice. It's hard, one of those things where it's hard to explain, but it was really kind of like a breakthrough moment where I just saw him and we both bumped into each other. He had something for me. Um, and then later that night we hung out and, like, I was talking to him about it, but it was, just, it was a crazy experience, like, the way things happen with dreams and, he just knew he had that feeling that he knew, so he went a different way than he'd normally go to get home, different route, and and so did I, and we met up kind of in the middle, and he gave mm-hmm. it to me. So that would be what I would have to add into that. There was a actually just in, in in theme with the conversation about dreams. There was a post that I saw on Reddit today. A lot of you are familiar with the website Reddit.com, and just sort of filters out a lot of things that people upload to the top top of the page and everything. But there was a post on there about dreams. It was a really interesting post, and, and I didn't even read the article. I just read the title, but it was a, the title was about a boxer by the name of Sugar Ray, and uh, this is from like way back in the day. And apparently, he had a dream one night that he killed his opponent in a box in a boxing match, and then he he decided not to fight, and he didn't want to fight that day. And he was like, "No way! Like you know, that dream just like sketched me out. I'm not going to do this." But then, like because of the fact that there was probably like a lot of money involved, and you know the sponsor and the presentation was going to happen regardless they made him fight like he didn't you know like they had to say well dude you got to fight you can't just not do this because of a silly dream long story short he gets into the match and he goes through with it and he accidentally ended up killing the guy and so again you know like is that in itself just extreme coincidence quote unquote or like was that sort of yeah. evidence to the fact that like he in as bizarre and unfortunate as the circumstance as that was he was like tapping into uh, foresight into the future and I mean even just narrowing in on that topic like I love the idea that like we as humans exist beyond the present moment in, in like you know we exist 
exists into the past and into the future. And when we, in, when we are in our dreams, we are in that space where time doesn't really exist in the same way. And because of that, we can get information from the future that sort of like manifests to us through symbolism. And it sort of like gives us a heads up and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, like I, I'd like to be able to segue this a little bit, sort of going back to the topic of like mysteries of the past and, and just sort of even what some of the ancient cultures might have to say about dreams uh, as well. But I have no problem talking about dreams. And uh, as it is right now, um, boys and girls, we have not heard from Santos at all. So, uh, you know, we're just <laughs> really just working with, uh, with what we got here, which is still a lot of awesome ideas and opportunities. And if uh, Santos agrees with it, then I'm sure we'll be able to get him featured from early on in a next episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. So stay tuned for that. But again, so go- going back to that idea, maybe uh, Justin, or, or what, do, what do you think about the idea of like literally getting uh, a premonition such as that within a dream or just premonitions in general? I mean, it's possible, but, like, I mean, I would say, like, 3% of a dream, it, it, there's, like, that aspect to it. A lot of it, it has to do with the previous day as well as the future day. Um, it's kind of like a mix of the two together combined with, like, your state of mind, your emotions, and then, like, the overall, like, theme of your life. And then there's the, the influences that's been upon you, your stresses, and it's a whole combination of all of those things, not just past, but also, I'm at least through my own experiences, also future. But, like, yeah, it's it's tough to say, you know, oftentimes, like, I, my philosophy has always been, uh, when it comes to dreams and dream recording, it's kind of like every morning you reach out your hand. Um, whether or not something's placed in your hand, is, that's not what it's about. It's just about having that like active reverence, holding out your hand. But like, sure enough, if something needs to go in that hand, it will be there. And that's kind of my philosophy um, in in life is you know when something needs to be expressed, um, having a regular practice of writing down your dreams um, opens the possibility of that. Uh, yeah. One thing to uh, go along the kind of the Egypt and the ancient times and stuff like that. I don't know if many know if you like of uh, Lemurian seed quartz crystals, um, but they have I have I have a strong connection with them, so I ended up buying quite a bunch of them. I had them scattered all over my uh, my room and that, and I put one under my pillow, and you know it promotes me to have a you know a really good sleep and remember more of my dreams. So I just wanted to see if you guys had any input on the the Lemurian quartz crystal, like seed crystals, um, and from, you know, a lot of teachings I've learned and things I've learned, they actually have kind of hidden messages in them. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any experience with uh, those kind of quartz crystals. Like, e- even just the idea of crystals, like, holding on to memories of the past, is that sort of what you're referring to? Yeah, exactly. And this Lemurian seed quartz, it's supposed to um, be in relation to Lemuria, which is a time before Atlantis. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those another ancient times, and they say you know these crystals were placed on Earth to kind of hold the memories and this knowledge for the for present day people like ourselves. When we get them, we can learn the memories and, and the knowledge that actually came from those times and put mm-hmm. them in correlation in our like, modern day life. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think that's that was really cool. It is a cool idea. I will agree. It is a cool idea. Um, I guess in a situation like that, you got to sort of bring into question, like, you know, like who is calling this crystal a Lumerian crystal? You know, like is this actually sourced mm-hmm. back to the origin of the theoretical continent that no longer exists sort of thing? Or is this, you know, someone just putting a name to this because they are trying to sell it kind of thing. But at the same time, I I think there is something really interesting with the idea of memories being stored in crystals. And even the idea that, you know, a lot of talks of Atlantis talks about how they use like crystal technology. And, uh, you know, I I can understand why in a lot of ways, but also probably in more metaphysical ways than we realize as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it'd be cool if uh, if there if there literally were people, or if we could even experience this, this ourselves, where like crystals literally worked like little thumb drives, and you know they're just like here, dude. Like I had this crazy dream last night. I uploaded it to this crystal. Here, hold on to this, and then they like put the crystal in their hand, and then they like get a vision of your dream or something like that. I mean, as crazy as that sounds, maybe there's actually like a little bit 
of, of, of truth in some way or another of that idea. But yeah, like I, I think, I think that is really interesting. Um, I, I'm not really too sure like what the other guys might have to say, but I do want to say I want to be able to bring on another caller shortly. But if any, anybody else just wants to throw yeah, yeah. anything in there about that, well, well, sort of. Um, I don't mean to take the emphasis away from the crystals and the potential of them or not, but just again, like, and I and I, and I sometimes do kind of emphasize this, but um, what, what's actually most important, if one actually wants to have an experience, especially um, you know, in in the in the tradition of the prophets, um, these prophets who had these revelatory experiences, um, and they're, they're, they're quite, uh, you know, people always talk about the Merkaba, um, that actually is a word meaning the chariot, and actually talks about, it actually refers to um, uh, Ezekiel's vision, it, it's, an, it's an ancient uh, prophetic text by Ezekiel, where he basically creates the blueprint of how to achieve the prophetic state, and how to actually have a prophecy. And, and and the thing about prophecy is that from from the perspective of the Old Testament is that it's one has basically essentially receiving messages from the divine, so to speak. But to actually yeah. have such an incredible experience and communication from the infinite, one cannot be filled with the egoic concerns that fill one's everyday life. So from the from the mystical perspective of the prophets, they spent years and years and years in self-refinement and purity and humbleness. And, and basically, they just became vessels to receive from, from the divine. But the only way for that to actually happen was through the, the character refinement and through becoming basically saints. Um, and I think that's a lot very underemphasized in kind of the New Age, um, the New Age discussions about how, you know, we want to have these amazing experiences and we're all interested in these higher states of consciousness but a prelude to these higher states of consciousness especially in dreams because the prophets did receive most of their revelations in the dream state but that involved very very rigorous and intense spiritual discipline both in terms of behavior and in terms of uh like obviously getting into the deeper states of the mind but the two are completely interrelated and correlated and so for me, I guess the focus is, has to be less on can this object do this or can this thing bring me this amazing connectivity or experience. It's more like the more I actually delve deeper into into myself and understand where I actually need to work on, on in terms of the character traits, that actually might refine and improve my meditation. Um, and that's something that cannot be underestimated. And, and the reason for that, I guess, Kabbalistically, is because the Kabbalic tradi- Kabbalistic tradition does have a ton of meditative ex- practices and experiences, and especially emphasizes that one should to, 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 should meditate and one should should pray and, and 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 kind of lower themselves and become one with the divine. But a prelude to that is to actually become like the divine, and the way that one becomes like the divine isn't through the receptivity, because rece- receiving is actually the opposite of the divine, so to speak. In, Kabbalist, in the Kabbalistic tradition, it's all about how God is the ultimate infinite giver. And that it's kind of like you can't give anything to the infinite. So that we have to kind of transform our vessels into these separate fragmented pieces that want to receive for ourselves into actually being givers. And when we become givers, we do receive these amazing oneness experiences. We do have this connection and these dreams that will mean something and these, these messages being imparted to us. The more we are refined spiritually, the more we will have these experiences within us, and the more we will feel connected. And so I just wanted to kind of emphasize that, especially in dreams, that if we are so concerned with the, our, our everyday, like if, that, if our everyday interactions play, like kind of cloud over our experience, and there's nothing kind of more that we're striving to, our dreams aren't necessarily going to impart to us this wisdom. But the more we're focused on developing our character and the more we're focused on connecting to the infinite, so to speak, we will have these experiences within our dreams. And I think that just can't be mm-hmm. underemphasized, the importance of that. Yeah, I yeah. definitely yeah. agree, Noah. Like, it's it's a yeah. really... It, I, I can definitely personally attest, too, that, you know, um, the, as one refines one's own character and, uh, and learns how to... Um, you know, manage the the monkey mind or practice a bit more mindful um, awareness of one's own thoughts. 
um, and then is able to transform it into kindness for others. Like it definitely has a profound effect on the amount of uh, things that you experience. And I, at first it seems like a, the correlation doesn't make sense if, if you're uh, if you're more of a scientific minded individual, but let me put it this way is um, like you, you kind of deep down in your subconscious, you feel bad for, you know, not helping others and, or, you know, do not doing something you could have done or, or doing something that you should not have done. So it kind of, your dreams become more seamed in that way. But once you've let go of that, once you're, you know, if you're acting kindness daily, it's not something that's worrying your subconscious mind. Therefore, it has it's more of a, a capability to grow and uh, explore itself, so to speak. And I can definitely personally agree with you. Know, one like uh, learns how to manage the mind, the more profound one's dreams become. Like, for example, mm-hmm. um, let's say you, okay, everyone's all about lucid dreaming nowadays. Let's say there, what are you going to do? Like, what are your interests? Like, you're going to try to fly, you're going to be a tourist, you want to go see the pyramids, or, you know, do you want to uh, go try to figure out the, the mysteries of our past or astrotheology, or, like, do you want to figure out if there's a st- if this stone under your pillow is going to do something cool? Or, like, uh, I mean, for myself, like, those were the things I first wanted to explore. Those were really interesting. And by all means, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, say not to do them, I mean, all along the way, right? Um, but, you know, eventually... I would I would start to get interested in more things like okay uh, like you know, understand how am I existing beyond my body my eyes are shut my it's a basically a course now my science tells us where this so like body right I'm just asking questions that are very deep that you can't really get an answer from the average individual from or just like doing something radical like most people are like hey I want to try to fly like why not try to melt out to the dirt and post? Leave it. Close your eyes down. Like focus on the intention. Like take me where I need to be and show me what I need to see. Open your eyes and up where you are, right? Uh, or like something really Because I find like uh, when you realize like you're in the dream, your mind governs the reality. If you don't know how to control the mind, like if you're not uh, like a uh, regularly practicing meditation, then you won't really have a controlled experience of just be like briefly aware and you lose awareness. And so I definitely agree with you, know, like, like uh you definitely have to be able to let go of your day and, and if you're not practicing kindness and mindfulness and all those things then it's gonna be hard to. Like you just literally won't be able to your subconscious mind won't let you. Mm-hmm. Cool guys. Yeah, Thanks for it's really I, I, program and you're kinda like sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, we got about 45 minutes left in the show, and I was going to talk about how we need to bring on the next callers and stuff. But but go ahead, Austin. Go, make make your point, and then we'll we'll do that in a second. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, like, I totally agree with what you guys have been saying. And, you know, it's, it's literally about trying to, you know, reprogramming your, your, your mind and, you know, kind of looking at things from this, not just this main aspect. Like, I find that, you know, I, I'll sometimes I'll, in the day I'll take a step back kind of from my my physical mind and that's how you got to kind of look at things take a step back rather than judging and staying with that one thought you know to explore kind of like your options take a couple steps back and, and kind of look at things rather than being right in that moment take a look back and then you know like you said be kind to of others you know try and do more things day to day that can help others is you know and that's going to help the bigger picture of things and, and like you guys mm-hmm. staying with the intent of uh, you know all the astro traveling that's that's, you know, very popular and kind of new age stuff. But if you don't have, like I think you guys said, you know, if you don't have that strong intent behind it, that's going to help the greater good, or, you know, help you. Uh, you know, like, I've, obviously it's a good thing to do, but, you know, you have to have that strong intent behind it where you can take some knowledge from it and be a better person and, you know, help everybody in the whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's... Um... I mean, even going back to like the the laws of the sun, that that anime movie I was talking about earlier, there was like one line in there near the end, and I mean we've we've heard this before, but it was just good as a, a reminder because it said, you know, like the, the the Buddhist teachings and stuff. It says that like yes, like your primary focus in life should be like your spiritual progression, your spiritual development, but at the same time, it's like that and 
helping other people. So, I mean, you know, you don't want to just, like, walk past someone who's in need and just be like, oh, sorry, can't help you right now, buddy. Like, I'm too busy enlightening myself, you know? Like, that's, like, that's exactly what you shouldn't be doing because when you can sort of see that, like, all, you, you get into that oneness idea, then you see someone suffering as you're suffering. So helping other people is a huge, huge part of, of being able to just, like, progress spiritually. And, and you're right, like, as you just sort of, like, act more out of the heart, uh, that does, it ripples. It, it's crazy to think how much our actions in the physical day-to-day life do ripple into our dreams. And I think we sort of underestimate that because there isn't uh, what we recognize as some sort of like tangible consistency, some sort of tangible measure, measuring device that we can use for that. But it, it would be like it's unquestionable to think that like what we are doing in the day is not in some way of changing the what is happening in our experiences at night. So, yeah, no, definitely. If you want to, you know, this episode is kind of turned into a focus just around dreams, which is something I'm totally cool with and have no problem about and uh we can get into some more tips um just about like dream stuff and and just getting people into the idea of uh how they can remember their dreams and get more involved with it but we'll do that um a little bit later at this point i will say that i i want to be able to bring on the next caller who is on skype with the skype id true wisdom lover and i apologize and thank you for them for being patient we do have a couple other callers who we may be able to we do should be able to get to a little bit later on at this point in the show i will just say with about 42 minutes i think everybody who's tuned in at this point is the people who are, who are going to be continuing to tune in so i want to put out a, a reminder for everybody in the live chat to use this opportunity to share your facebook profiles we do this every episode at least once to share your facebook Facebook profiles as an invitation for anybody also in the live chat for shifters all across the globe to be able to connect with you where you are. And of course, you can share other links for other projects that you have. And uh, I'll post a live chat for this episode through the Facebook page afterwards so you can go back and check that out as well. And you can also add in your profiles in the YouTube comments or in the blog talk comments afterwards as well. And uh, another reminder, if you want to get involved for the draw for the free shift buttons later on, send a message to facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio. And uh, We'll do that with about 10 minutes left, and we'll probably do a meditation closer to the end of the episode. And uh, again, if you want to be able to show love and help support us, share more free shift funds, then please send a micro donation to gofundme.com slash paradigm shift central and uh, that will give us the potential to give out two batches of free shift buttons later in the episode but we'll uh, do that once we get there for now i'm gonna bring on another caller the caller true wisdom lover from skype and uh with a name like that that sounds pretty promising so i'm interested to hear what they have to bring to the conversation circle so for everybody else i'm going to keep you guys on we're just sort of building the circle here this is working well this is flowing nicely and uh yeah still Still no word from Santos, but that's okay. You know, like everything happens for a reason. Even or that was a post I put up not too long ago. I said everything happens on purpose, even when it's by accident. So I mean, you know, if this is what it was supposed to happen, this is cool because this is giving us, this is giving everybody who's on air right now a chance to be able to talk and have this conversation. This conversation is the one that's important because it's the one that's happening right now. So we're gonna bring on True Wisdom Lovers. So True Wisdom Lover, if you're ready, we're gonna bring you on to Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you, I, I, hey, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> welcome. Welcome indeed. All right. Caller, what, what is your name? Where are you calling from? And what would you like to bring to the show? Uh, yeah, my name is Kevin Gray. Oh, cool, man. And uh, I'm calling from Southern California at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's kind of interesting that some folks were able to make it tonight because that was the reason that I was tuning in. But when it became a sort of, you know, reflection and an open dialogue, uh, it was synchronicity for me. So I realized that I needed to get out my headset and go ahead and participate for a moment and sort of uh, throw two cents into the ring. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're glad we're glad you decided to join us. But, yeah, Kevin, by all means, go ahead. Share what you'd like to share. Yeah, well, there, you know, I've been listening for the last, you know, uh, while since you started the show and also trying to watch the NFL playoffs at the same time. So I still have my worldly stuff going on, you know, at the same time of trying to get out of the body. But um, all kidding aside, uh, I was listening for, you know, listening to you guys talk and you, many people brought up many great points and whatnot. So let me just sort of begin by saying uh, something before I forget, which is I received the buttons that you uh, that I that the cosmos yeah. brilliantly uh, <laughs> bequeathed to me through a draw of a raffle of you know something like that, and you know when they showed up it was you know I've been 
I've been in this game for a long time, and uh, I've been traveling the world for the last seven years, and I've been studying with somebody for the last 20, and I've played the academic game as well. But, um, you know, coming back to the United States, it's been really interesting and very difficult, lots of levels, and I've connected back with my old uh, wisdom group, and, you know, I do my meditation and my spiritual study and et cetera, and, you know, I, I work it, but... You know, when those buttons showed up, and I, you know, and we've talked about this, and, and looking at what you're doing with those buttons, and I want you to know that they're working, like, absolutely. When I got those and I took one look yeah, at man. them, I thought, this is amazing. <laughs> so I wanted to say thank you and keep on doing that. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Yeah, no, I'm happy. Yeah, Kevin was one of the past winners of the raffle draw that we have. And so, yeah, a little, little shift button testimonial. The buttons do work. Confirmation there. And, of course, anybody listening, exactly. you can order the buttons online at any time. You don't just have to win them through the draw. You can do that through paradigmshiftcentral.com slash buttons. That's, so, yeah, yeah. that's my shift button testimonial. <laughs> you said it Thank exactly. you. <laughs> Right, right on. Okay, right, so but, I wanted yeah. to get that out before I forgot because it, it does mean a lot. And, and you're right. I saw a video of you one time that said, uh, oh, I just have to make sure it's recording. And somebody said, why? And you said, because it's so important, because of synchronicity and there's people out there and you know that it does make a difference. And it does, man. You know, I'm not new to this game, but, you know, when I got a button, it was just like it sparked something inside of me that just, you know, I went meditating. I wrote poems. You know, I, I was reflecting, and it, it makes a difference. So congratulations on a brilliant, brilliant uh, movement on that part. I don't know. So, to have you as note, part of it. Uh, I just wanted to say, you know, there's actually so many things I want to say, but I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'll just try to pick the most important one. Um, dreams. Now, and also going back to ancient philosophy and ancient uh, civilization. Now, in ancient Greece, I'm not sure if many people are aware of this, but in ancient Greece, when you went to a doctor and you had to, they gave you a diagnosis, they didn't just look at your physical symptoms, they also wanted your dreams. Because your dreams are a reflection of what's going on in your soul, or your mind, right? And, you know, we got the whole mind-brain dialogue going on about modern philosophy and, you know, modern psychology versus esoteric wisdom, ancient philosophy, etc. But... The ancients do this, right? They don't just deal with the body. They know that the body is a manifestation of the spiritual. And so they look at the entire... It's a holistic approach, right? Now, the study that I've done for the last 10 years in terms of dreams is that dreams are a gift of basically providence. So we look at past, present, future taken together as a simultaneous whole. That's eternity. And here we are in this sort of parochial vision of our soul and body and we can only see certain things at certain times but everything is given to us at every moment and so the things that we overlook that are important for our spiritual development in our waking world are are picked up and made into an allegory in the dream world or the astral projection world because it is an out-of-body experience right where are you when you're dreaming um so if you look at the messages, then it can give you basically the key to your destiny to unfold in your spiritual development. Now, I want to say one thing about the word interpretation. Interpretation is a difficult word because it means to add or take away. And somebody was talking about interpretation earlier. And I just want to clarify that when you truly have a dream, okay, the dream comes from divine, let's say, consciousness, for example, and it knows your past, present, and future, and it gives you the specific synchronistic message, let's say, that it that you need, that you've overlooked, or that you are not paying attention to, or that maybe if you're not giving yourself credit for something in your waking world, then you have a like sort of this dream that highlights that. If you think you're successful in your waking world, but you're an absolute failure, but you're not recognizing it, right? You're ignorant of it then the dream will pick that up, and that is when we call nightmares, and we have these sort of bad visions because it's like this reflection, right, like Rumi or something, or even Ram Dass, right, like this reflection of your soul right back into the metaphysical mirror. And so you get messages from the divine at all time in order, you know, and, and, and synchronistic messages in order to follow your post. So in terms of inter interpretation, you don't need to interpret. What you need is a fellow midwife, who can allow you to birth the dream and look at how it relates to your past, present, and future, and then 
come to what I would call a reasoned understanding. In other words, it can't be based on ignorance. It can't be based on belief. It has to be based on understanding and knowledge, which is, once again, Plato's divided line, which is the allegory of the cave, which, again, goes back to all esoteric wisdom, the Egyptians, right, Islamic thought. We we're talking about Islamic thought, the Kabbalah. And somebody mentioned the Merkaba a moment ago. Very well said. And then you also mentioned the Eye of Ra, and I wanted to say two things, and then I'll just slow down. If you look, if you cut the middle of the brain in half, and you look at the Eye of Ra and the Eye of Horus, uh, like, and you look at the pineal gland, it is the pineal gland. They knew that. That's why it's there. And we all know what the pineal gland, you know, the importance of it on many different levels. Mm-hmm. Second thing, Merkaba. Mer, light, ka, uh, spirit or soul, and ba meaning body. So in terms of sacred geometry and in terms of this light body that rotates around us, you know, when we get into that divine perfection state and we're able to, you know, erase the frequency and, and do all these things that we study on many different levels, that's what it's about, right? Like somebody had mentioned earlier, they were they had the right idea. They were talking about the chariot, and the chariot's a profound metaphor for the soul and the brain, the the mind, the soul, and the body, right? Like the he goes throughout all Platonic philosophy, and this is one thing I just want to say to everybody: we talk about Buddhism, we talk about the Kabbalah, right? We talk about you know uh, so many things on so many levels, and I was, that's why I was looking forward to hearing from Santos tonight, but. We can't forget the Platonic aspect and the Western aspect, the Western culture. We were shut off when the Christian Emperor Justinian in 425 AD shut down Plato's Academy and banned everybody and killed them. And that's how we get Proclus, Plotinus, the whole Neoplatonic tradition. So, yeah, okay, there you go. That was my five <laughs> sentences. Oh, that's good, man. I I appreciate you adding some insight there. I, I, I yes. building up the <laughs> moment. <laughs> well, we still got we still got plenty of time to still bounce a few ideas around. Um, I'm just epic. getting a message. Yeah, it was. I'm getting a message from our buddy Noah. He's got to leave in a minute. Um, he was actually the buddy who was talking about the Merkaba and the chariot. So I'm going to bring oh, him. Yeah, cool. I'm going to give him a chance to to just say goodbye and just any last points that he wanted to make. So cool. Noah, go go ahead. Oh, well, actually, I you know, I kind of was saying that I'm not leaving at this second. <laughs> um, oh, okay. <laughs> I just tried to send that back. But it's just interesting how you t- talk about the definition, because Merkava is actually a, a Hebrew word. Um, and, yeah. And so from, from, from the, the, the actual, I, I mean, I don't know how much this is connected with in kind of the New Age uh, Mendovici teachings. I don't, but he's not New Age, I would say, because he's all sacred geometry. And I, I, New Age is, I think, a difficult word. But so I don't mean to interrupt you. Continue. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, but when I meant New Age, I meant the difference. Like, it, I'm not talking. I'm talking about the difference between the biblical, like the modern interpretation, which I guess is still ancient in scope, versus the actual biblical inter, like the biblical aspect of Merkava. And how if now related. you mentioned Ezekiel, right? But that goes back to the Tree of Life, right? Does it not? Uh, yeah, I mean it's prophecy. It's the pro- how to achieve the prophetic state of how to how to receive prophecy. Yeah. And what I would and this goes back to something I was thinking about as providence, divine providence, and dreams. Like our dreams are basically prophetic visions, and we have to pay attention to them. Very, they are synchronistic signposts along the way. So I am agreeing with you actually on many different levels. Um, but it's interesting because the esoteric wisdom in the Kabbalah. You know, it's the same esoteric wisdom that is in all the, basically, the spiritual traditions. But I agree with you, Hebrew is very mystic, very coded. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, 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 there's just a little bit of a distinction that many people kind of get confused about. Because what happened was is that, especially in the Kabbalistic tradition, a lot of the stuff uh, that people know about Kabbalah comes from the more Western magic tradition of Kabbalah. Um, so... There's a lot of Kabbalah that that is is not really been given to the masses at all, um, and it's just more coming out now. So so I'm just just in terms of Kabbalah is even even kind of a blanket uh, term because it can mean so many different things to so many different people. Because um, sure. the whole ma- fair the enough, whole, yeah, absolutely the whole, agree. The, the whole magic tradition and, and and how to use the names of God to create certain energies and stuff like that. There's so many different aspects, but in terms of the actual chariot, um, obviously everything kind of can relate to sa- sacred geometry, um, but the main real crucible 
and, and this relates to what you said about if the dreams become prophetic visions or not. What I'm suggesting is that the more one becomes refined, the more prophetic, the, the more one communes with the divine, and the, the more dreams become prophetic. Absolutely. Because, because it's, it's basically in, in, in what, what Ezekiel had to do to receive a message from God is essentially he had to go into a, 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 a like the fire. Um, and essentially, so to actually get deeper into the to the unconscious and get deeper uh, into having experience of of oneness with God in a communication, these kinds of things one had to go through the absolute like hell, so to speak, of his mind, and actually, we all. and that would be a purification. Um, so it was such intense, intense, intense um, internal blackness before even reaching the light. Um, Absolutely. And I, and this is kind of what I'm alluding to, is just the amount of refinement that it takes to actually get and ride the chariot. So this chariot, what, what's really being alluded to in your kava is this rachav, comes from the word rachav, which is basically to ride. Um, one can't really ride the chariot until they've reached, this, uh, reached a certain state within themselves that is actually a vessel to receive from God. Uh, and it's very, and, and, no, no, and that's the prophecy of stock, so to speak, uh, in the literal sense, in the tradition, because there's, there's just, it just, there's no one on the level. Uh, it's very hard to meet someone who's actually a, a holy and righteous person. There are very, 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 very few people in this world that are really on that level. Oh no, I'm mm-hmm. holy, and I'll, I'll teach you for a hundred dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> what a deal! Yeah, what yeah. a deal! I usually charge two thousand an hour, but for you, it's such a discount. <laughs> Yeah. No, but all right. kidding aside, what you're saying is very real and very true. And, you know, um, it's very good insight. Let me ask you one question. Like, when you're looking at other metaphysical systems, do you see the ana- the ana- the analogical relationship? In other words, that if we have wisdom which is eternal, right, it's being manifested in different ways. Like, because a lot of the things that you just said reminded me of Buddhism. It reminded me of Hinduism. It reminded me of, you know, the Egyptian uh esoteric traditions so when you become a master in one tradition and i won't say you're a master but i'm just saying it sounds like you you know have a good understanding which by the way goes back to my key we need to stop using the word believe right believe doesn't require mind it just requires ignorance so it it sounds like you have a good understanding in a good study you're unfolding but do you look at other systems and then try to see how they fit as well like for example, Buddhism, Platonic philosophy, metaphysics, etc. Sorry, guys. 100%. I'm just going to jump in before Noah answers this. Just uh, touch and base. we got yeah. about 25 minutes and a couple more callers who I'd like to be able to bring on. So uh, after Absolutely. this, we'll, we'll, we'll segue. But yeah, go ahead, Noah. Yeah, well, I mean, 100%. Um, there's been, a, I mean, especially like Buddhist meditative practices. I mean, the thing that I don't get caught up in, and this is, has no uh, knock on any <laughs> tradition whatsoever, it's just that there is an underlying uh, uh, kind of theme of, of oneness that kind of permeates within all traditions, but it's very superficial to, to kind of say that they're all one because they're so unique and they have so much different things to offer. Buddhism is just an amazing, like, I mean, depends how it's used, of course, but um, it's basically just a psychology of the mind and, and how to understand how the mind works and how suffering works. Uh, and so for me, at least, and, I, and this could be for people that are struggling with their mindfulness meditation, to just make it more meaningful, like for me, because I, I always try to relate things back to my own tradition, and, and I love taking wisdom from certain places, especially uh, I was, had a lot of interest in Buddhism. So Buddhism, especially with the breath meditation, um, for me, what's enhanced it in, in my study, and, and just a little bit of understanding of the Kabbalah, is that the word for breath and the word for soul uh, have the yeah. same, have yeah, the same, absolutely. Uh, they're the same word. Uh, in Hebrew, so so for me, I, I, when I do meditate, oh, in Hebrew as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's Sanskrit. Yeah, exactly, and, and I and I've seen that connection in di- in the different traditions that like the breath is the soul. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, I always I do always try and relate things to my own tradition, but I definitely don't shy away and and kind of explore the the relevant aspects of Hinduism, Buddhism, all the other uh, wisdom traditions because th- there is wisdom within all. It's just for, for everyone has a unique kind of soul root. For me, that would be in the Jewish tradition. But that doesn't make it, it better or, or more than another tradition. It's just 
because I, that, that relation to the ancestry, because I feel connected, that's just me, you know? So yeah. it's, it's yeah, a holistic cool. approach. It's not a, a separatist approach. Um, sure. that, that's not how I kind of look at it. Yeah. Well, I'll let, I'll let cool. you continue, Skull. Go for it. Yeah, well, I think uh, Justin actually had a, a response to that. I, I will just say, um, with the uh, with the idea of doing meditation at the end, um, with the callers that we have on right now, does anybody want to volunteer to possibly lead us into a meditation? That goes for you as well, Kevin. Uh, what, by leading into a meditation, what do you mean? Um, usually we sort of like have somebody just sort of, well, I mean, it depends how we do it. You can sort of like talk over top of just uh, ambient music in the background or we can just verbally prepare ourselves and then we'll play some audio track just by itself with no talking and then just meditate for that. But I would love to practice. I don't know if anybody else can do a better job of me. <laughs> uh, practice job practice is what we're here for. So, I mean, if you want to, we can uh, we can touch back. Try to. We can, yeah, we, we can get back to that later. All right, cool. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Keeping things rolling along here um we got four callers still in the queue and i do want to be able to bring them on but justin you had a point that you wanted to make so oh, yeah. go, go ahead get off? Nope. no you you guys are all good it's all good okay go ahead uh, justin yeah i wanted to uh, respond to uh no guest mystery guest whose name i keep forgetting kevin. um <laughs> kevin <clears throat> yeah i was just gonna say like I, I definitely understand what both of you come at. Like I also agree, like it's it's often that when one refers to a specific thing, like in this uh specific uh blog talk radio thing, I've been referring a lot to science and the subconscious mind, so one would naturally assume that I'm some sort of scientific minded individual and therefore have less of an interest in exploring Buddhism or the Kabbalistic tree of life or um or new age spirituality. Now I mean I will be honest, I the one that I find the least interesting is is New Age spirituality because I feel like it doesn't have such rich ancient roots. But um, but even aside, it, it still has I very totally profound. Agree, by the way. It has it has a lot of profound profundities to it. Like for example, um, like listening to Eckhart Tolle is something I do in my spare time. Like his bu- his books are fucking amazing and yes, audio they are. So, anyways, uh, but I wanted to get back to what you guys were referring to, kind of bringing it all together. I've, I'm a uh, I, I've been studying at one uh, school of philosophy that also has a similar view, the view that every single tradition that has existed, not even just the religious traditions, but also the mythological traditions and also the traditions throughout humanity civilizations, for example, like the Incans, the Mayans, the, uh, the Aztecs, like, uh, et cetera, no, you know, the Greeks and the Romans, these this these things were built into the fabric of their society because they were, you know, spirit, more spiritually in tune, so to speak. So, like, I I totally agree with the the fact that even the sciences that exist nowadays and the researches that they're doing and the discoveries that they're making, you know, I mean, science is like a thousand years behind because they're, you know, just starting to discover the things Buddhism has been saying for a thousand were years. Were you the one that mentioned that the thing about years. crystals? Sorry to interrupt no, you. I didn't. I didn't mention oh, crystals. Okay. Um, uh, someone else mentioned sleeping with crystals under the bed, and, and I kind of uh, I touched upon that a bit. But um, what I was trying to express was just like that, you know, it it's it's all pointing to the same thing. Like I I think that the reason that this is happening is not because like it's this big giant grand coincidence, which it may be. Um, that or like that it or alternatively what others view is that it's been passed down like oh first there was the egyptian mythology and then the and then it turned into judaism and then it turned into christianity and all of it's just really worship of the sun like which is a popular view but i i don't necessarily agree with that i think the reason that it's happening and and the reason i've come to this conclusion is because i've been writing down my dreams for so long is this is kind of like the language this is like uh this is the language of the original spirituality or whatever you want to call it the original truth it's all like it's all in there like if you write down your dreams you'll see it's in this exact same symbolic yeah. form of the buddhist mythology or the greek mythology or the the jewish uh, uh jewish tanakh uh the yeah. stories in it it this is not like just like a single uh tradition is like right and another's wrong this is like the universal truth is just like finding any way it can express itself to any human in the best way that it would fit their mind or fit their 
spirit or whatever you want mm-hmm. to call it. That's that's my view. At least it seems that way, but who knows? Maybe I'm totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're totally – well, no, that's beautiful. It's always good to recognize if you might be wrong, but personally – I think what you said was very well said and very brilliant. And let me ask you a question. What school are you studying at or oh, where did okay, you yeah, yeah. So I mentioned, yeah, the, so be, basically I was introduced to this philosophy of kind of uh, taking religions and, and cross-examining them in order to greater yeah, understand the truth. Yeah, comparative mythology compared but as to well, religion. But as well through the, also <laughs> comparing, uh, compared, comparing religions, mythologies, with, also with your dreams, et cetera, so you have like your own experience to, to balance your uh, ideas, oh, not ideas, but your philosophical inquiries. My question about. is where or with who? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, all okay. you want to know the name. You want to know the name. We all yeah, know I, always, I always have a hesitation to say the name because then people will be like, hey, oh, this, this guy is like a part of this faith level, and right? now he's a part of a religion. And then it, it like, it's like, oh, I'm not representing my people. I get people. it, I get it. But I'm curious. You, you have to tell me. I know. I just suck your I'm going to say it. <laughs> I'm just okay. trying to build up this. Assessment. I mean, look, I'll tell you. Noetic Society – OpeningMind.com, NoeticSociety.org, Pierre Grimes. This is the person that I've studied with for the last 20 years. Cool. I, Type I that into feel the like, chat. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I should. Um, you guys, I can tell you that because, yeah, I feel the same way. Like, you know, it's very hard to communicate with people that you think might understand you. <clears throat> but I tell you what, if you're wearing a shift button, huh. you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so, like, so, the school that yeah. Justin was referring to is uh, yeah. the Gnostic. Okay, I'll just type it. Yeah, Gnostic there, it's, Gnostics it's, London. I just yeah, type it into cool. the chat, gnosticteachings.org. Okay, cool. But uh, yeah, originally, yeah. that's I guess you could say that that's what it's from. I mean, my, I, my own personal philosophy is an offshoot of that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it's Gnostic similar, teaching, very similar. Of course, Gnosticism, right? Revealed knowledge. Gnosis. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Sorry, go ahead. Cool. All right. Okay. So, 17 minutes left in the chat. Just uh, keeping a little moderation going on here. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with how things are, are going. And uh, I don't know. We, we may still hear from Santos. 17 minutes left. Go on. <laughs> like, but uh, either, either way, uh, I mean, I'm happy with how this episode's gone. And, and thank you to everybody who's been a part of it. And uh, I will say, um, we potentially will be doing an after party video hangout afterwards. But I'm going to be looking for somebody else to host it. So I know there's somebody listening to the show who knows how to create an on-air Google video hangout. And if they can do that and send me a link for that, that would be greatly appreciated. Just because I'm probably not going to be sticking around for it too much tonight because I got like a killer headache right now. So I'm not going to want to sit in front of a computer screen. But uh, anyway, so again, if uh, either Roscoe or somebody, somebody can host the video hangout, we'll post a link for that afterwards at facebook.com slash paradigm shift radio. And you guys can continue the conversation there. But uh, yeah, let me let me bring on some more callers here. So uh, we got a call from area code 777 three and i'm gonna bring them on and then uh we'll sort of play it by ear i mean if the meditation doesn't happen i'm kind of more interested in just getting uh some more input from the callers and obviously encouraging people to meditate uh on their own time and and so forth and so on but anyways call from air code 773 we're going to bring you on a paradigm shift radio so if you're ready here we go hello caller can you hear us yo what up guys yo yo all right caller what what is your name where are you calling from and what would you like I'm to bring from, to the show? I'm from Chicago, and my name is Christian. My first time calling is fucking dope. I really <laughs> like the show. I, I awesome. heard about it. I heard about it on Instagram. Nice. Thought I'd give it a shot. Yeah. But uh, I like to talk about dreams, dude, because dreams are like fascinated with them. I've had totally. some crazy, crazy ones. Um, I don't know if you guys know about mugwort. Yeah, the artist. Yeah, well, or, or I drink a mugwort, lot of the tea, rather. Mugwort, yeah, mugwort tea, and that's helped me a lot with like my dreams and stuff, which is crazy. And uh, what's it called? And I, I agree with that one. I don't know. I didn't catch his name, but what he was saying, but like refine. I don't know what he said exactly, but like if you work on yourself, you know. Yeah, refinement. Re- yeah, you refine. Know? Yeah, and I uh, like agree with that. <laughs> Because, uh, like, I've been trying to, like, refine. Can I just mention one thing? Sorry, is the call, is the call still you. there? Is Christian still uh, there? I think so. Or I think he is. He was, he was like, talking about refinement. Is Christian, are you still there? It sounded like he cut out, though. Oh, weird. Okay, all right. Um, well, Christian, let me just there, mention just, something just about refinement to see go, if go he ahead, comes back Kevin. on. Uh, I was just going to say, I agree with the idea of refinement. Like, 
it's like a multifaceted diamond, right? It has to be polished on every facet at all times. And that is like Buddha nature. Like the moment you think you're enlightened, there's something else that's going to come up to show you that you're not. And you have to always pay attention, right? You must always focus, and that's mindfulness, and that's continuing that spiritual journey. So going back to what he said about refinement, you know, you have to pay attention, right? You have to refine and build yourself and develop spiritually every day because if you lose that practice, then you lose that, you know, you lose. Oh, he comes back, I think. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Dude, that, 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 that was weird, man. My phone's tweaking. But yeah, like, I, like every day I'm like, I'm trying to like grow spiritually and like work, you know, whatever I'm going through every day. I'm trying to like, you know, fix it. And like when I do, when I do try to, like be aware of these signs like uh i always have like some weird dream i can't really explain but i mean take them as a message it's a message message, right yeah Yeah. so i actually had an idea maybe like related to this refinement that sort of like not really leading a meditation but i there is something that i do um every day that is really practical and is really important for character development that i could kind of share in a couple minutes um, if anybody, if, 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 if the listeners kind of want to, you know, jot it down for, for very practical yeah. tool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's spend like the next couple of minutes just putting out some practical tips for the listeners because yeah, uh, that's so always perfect. important. Practicality is key. Yep. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I'm gonna, uh, I can find the best list. So, but before I do that, um, basically the practice involves kind of, and I can attach a link and I can kind of do all that stuff too. Um, but in a nutshell, the practice really involves choosing a character trait for the week um, from a list. And, and, and I, there's different lists, and they all have different merits. Um, but, for example, this week I'm working on truth. So that means that basically I wake up in the morning, and the first thing I do is I read a quote or I read a little teaching, like just a sentence or two on, like, truth. That means telling the truth, making sure that you're in endeavoring in a truthful manner and everything that you do. And basically, I, I kind of meditate on that for a couple of minutes. And then I kind of start my day out. And, and although I am paying attention to everything else that I'm doing, I pay extra attention to, to how I'm speaking and if it's truthful and, and if people around me are speaking truthful. And that's kind of the energy that permeates that day. And I do that for a week. And basically, I rotate each week on a different trait. And at nighttime, after the day... I either kind of reflect out loud or I kind of write down specifically what happened during that day in a non-judgmental way, how I acted in relation to truth. And then I do have a little book on, on character refinement, but other than that, I kind of just, in the morning, I kind of read something to stick with me for the day. And then at night, I really reflect on each character mm-hmm. trait that I, on the, on the character trait that I kind of went through. Sorry, um, what's yeah. your name again? Who's talking? Noah. 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 I'm sorry. You're the uh, the Buddhist, right? He's uh, Jewish. Like, I'm, oh, Jewish. I'm yeah. joking. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> because everything that everything that you're saying right now is so Buddhist and Hindu. So I, I guess what I'm wondering is, once again, do you identify yourself as Jewish? But you know, we'll talk about that later. But let yeah, me just yeah. say one thing: the Pythagoreans. Just to go back to. A very important point I remembered earlier, but also going back to what you're saying right now. The Pythagoreans did the same thing, right? The esoteric traditions. They wake up in the morning. They did one or two practices. Either they wake up in the morning and they recollect, they recollect all their dreams from the night before, and then they recollect their entire day from the day before, trying to go all the way back to the moment of birth. Or they before they go to bed, they meditate and recollect the entire day and the dreams the night before. So the the practice is to basically recollect all of your days and all of your dreams up until the moment of your birth. Because if you don't remember your birth, how do you know you were born, right? So, boom, that's how you get back to that divine luminosity, cycle mm-hmm. off the birth and death, et cetera, et cetera. But it comes back down to this, what he's talking about, the practical things that uh, Noah just mentioned, very accurate, right? Daily meditation, focusing, taking something, working with it, making a schedule out of it, boom, bam, off the cycle. Yeah, so like it, exactly, like in, it must permeate, has to permeate all traditions. It's, it's practical skills on how to be a human being. Yeah, um, yeah. And just, just a very, very like, if people are actually writing this down, um, just to finish off the, the kind of 
guidedness of this that really is non-sectarian in its entirety. Um, I'll just list 13 that people can really kind of focus in on. Um, so I'll start with the first one on this list. Uh, it's called, the first is equanimity. And it just says, rise above events that are inconsequential, both good and bad. <laughs> They're not worth disturbing your equanimity. So equanimity would be the first one. The second one would be patience. When something bad happens to you and you do not have the power to avoid it, do not aggravate the situation even more through grief. It's just about being patient and kind of just allowing things and just accepting. Um, the next one is order. Just that our actions and possessions should be ordered, orderly. Each and every one in a set place and at a set time. The fourth one is decisiveness. All of our acts should be preceded by deliberation. When you have reached a decision, act without hesitation. The fifth one would be cleanliness. Let no stain or ugliness be found in your possessions or in your home. And basically that just means in cleanliness in just the sense of just how you speak and how you go about your appearance both on a, from, a, from an outward physical perspective but from an inward kind of like spiritual perspective. Uh, the next one would be humility, which is, it says here, always seek to learn wisdom from every man. And what I actually learned amazingly yesterday, which is awesome, is just don't take up too much space. So basically like, there's, it's not that you don't want it, that you want to nullify yourself and become nothing, because you are important, but just that only take up the space that you need to take up at a certain time. Seven is righteousness. Righteousness. It just says, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. Eight is frugality. Be careful with your money. Do not even spend a penny needlessly. Nine, diligence. Always find something to do for yourself or for a friend. And don't allow a moment of life to be wasted. Ten, silence. Before you open your mouth, be silent and reflect. What will benefit my speech? What benefit will my speech bring me or others? Eleven, pompous. The words of the wise are stated gently. In being good, do not be called evil. Twelve, truth. Do not allow anything to pass your lips that you are not certain is completely true. And lastly, separation. Strengthen yourself so you can stop lewd thoughts. And I think that alludes to how your meditation discipline really is. So yeah, uh, anyone, maybe even one person, write it down. Great. If one person could, could actually do that, we'd all be better people. Uh, I struggle with it every day. But yeah, very practical. How do we work on ourselves? How do we become better people? Cool. All right. It reminds me of the eightfold path. Sorry. You know. I'm gonna go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna say we're gonna need to just cut things a little bit short here. Nothing personal. Uh, with about six minutes left. We still left. have six minutes left, Good. man. That's what I'm saying. We have six minutes left, which means we have to do the uh, button draw. And uh, for the two callers who are still in the queue, um, not entirely sure if we'll be able to get to you guys this time. But uh, the plan theoretically was to have another community call-in episode next week. Though uh, we'll have to see what the plans are for that. Maybe Santos will will be on the show next week. But again, go to facebook.com/paradigmshiftradio. Go to facebook.com/paradigmshiftcentral for more of the content, daily community videos, and also you can find us on Instagram as some of you have through instagram.com slash paradigm shift radio and uh maybe i'm gonna do serious, the... sorry go ahead <laughs> what was that? i was gonna say maybe serious pulled santos back or something like that maybe maybe well it's all it's all good so no hard feelings <laughs> or everything like i said everything happens on purpose even when it's by accident so i'm gonna do the draw for the shift buttons now and we're only doing a draw for one free batch of shift buttons and again if you want to help support the show and to be able to help contribute to the shift button campaign you can do that through the gofundme page gofundme.com slash great i'm just central etc etc but anyway it's gonna do the draw now so if i can get a collective ohm from everybody so just oh The universe has synchronistically chosen. The winners for this week's shift buttons are Harmony. And uh, Harmony is actually one of the callers. Or That's one of the such new a list beautiful list name. Look at that. We had uh, from not too, too long ago, actually. And I'm uh, going to be able to message her on Facebook, and she'll find out about those. So congratulations to Harmony. You won yourself a free batch of shift buttons. And, of course, anybody else can order theirs online. And, uh, yeah, they're super awesome and a super effective way to hack the matrix. But, again, um, last thing, I just want to say, if you do enjoy the show, if you want to check out more of the content and you enjoy that, too, then please consider signing up as a monthly supporter for this project for only $1 a week, $4 a month, Paradigm just 
comedycentral.com slash donate. It's greatly appreciated. It helps support the future of conscious media. But I do want to um, let Justin sort of jump in here, uh, just in terms of like some more practical tips for people who are interested in uh, getting uh-huh. into more uh, relationship with their dream exploration. So, Justin, uh, any any practical tips that you can share with our listeners? Three, I think. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I like what you guys were saying already. Retrospection is key. Like, at the end of the day, before you go to sleep, like, try to remember what happened that day. Like, what streets do you walk down? Who do you see? Who do you remember? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, start with the big things when you're first trying out the practice, and then you can get to the more subtle things, like what's every word that came out of my mouth. That's a really hard one. Um, uh, and then et cetera, et cetera, as you intensify the practice. And then when you wake up in the morning, do the exact same thing with your dream, and you'll find it a lot, a lot more easier. I think the biggest one is what lesson did I learn at the end of the day? Because if you don't like look back, you just forget about the stupid shit you did. Like I, for myself, like it's, it's pretty painful to realize, like, fuck, I did that, like, last week, the exact same thing. Like, anyways, so, that, yeah, retrospection, one. Number two um, is uh, any practice, like, pick a spiritual practice, whatever you feel like is in tune with you, and practice it for, like, 15 minutes a day. It could be anything. It could be, like, uh, Zen writing, like, just write whatever comes to your mind. Or it could be uh, meditation. It could be uh, writing down your dreams or reading your dreams if you if you're getting back into remembering dreams um it could be anything but pick a spiritual practice and do it daily that's like the huge challenge is try doing something every day cuz when you do it will really grow and that's when you get to these things you know people are talking about like being able to remember all the way back to when you were born and before that or like you know being able to uh go to sleep and enter into the astral and then find out what the rock under your pillow is got to say. You know, these are things these are the things that that you that you achieve through daily consistent practice. So that's the third thing I want to say. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Every single person I know, including myself, that I've ever met in my life have struggled with this. But anyone, there's only been like one or two individuals I've ever known that have been able to pass that break the like to be able to consistently practice every day uh th- this is like the biggest thing in my opinion maybe it's just because i'm struggling with it but consistency is key it's the key it's a key that no one can give you that's why it's a secret key you have to build it for yourself but when you build that key consistency mm-hmm. you'll be able to open that door anytime sure but we don't have the key you got to build it build it consistency mm-hmm. I can't say that so many times. Sometimes I think to myself, like, how many different ways can I word the, this, like, practice consistently? <laughs> all, right, okay. all right, we got we got one one minute left. So was that all of it, Justin? And, and of course, remind yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, somebody else. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, remind he's, people he's, to write, write down their dreams and uh, well, daily reality check. Well, see, because he's consistently so putting it out, man. He's Look at him. He's doing it Hi. every Sunday rocking it doing the yeah. meetings doing the shift buttons i love you brother Keep hey man we we all got a role to play so i mean i hope the whole idea behind Absolutely. this is to aspire to inspire so i mean it i as i always say you know it's the little things that make the big difference so ask yourself what are the little things that you can do in your community and of course reminding the ways of the buddha you know focus on your own spiritual path but but don't neglect being able to help others when you can help others and, and just going out there and putting out that idea that you might not know what the universe has to offer you, but know that everything is a teaching. And if you can embrace it in that way, then you will be able to get something out of it. So with only 20 seconds left in the show, guys, uh, there may or may not be an after party. We'll figure that out. I'm not going to host it. I got a headache. I got to get off the computer. But if everybody here wants to join me in saying farewell to the Internet, then, of course, go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com for more awesome media. So farewell, Internet. Thank you for joining Farewell, tuning. Internet. Bye, Internet. Bye, Internet. Take care. Bye, well, Bye guys. Internet. All right. Thanks, guys. One love.
Thank you for listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. If you would like to connect with people where you are and continue the conversations further, then check out paradigmshiftcentral.com slash buttons to order your supply of shift buttons to share with people to help invite them to this global project while also helping make new friends and building local community where you are. Shift buttons are tools to hack the matrix and tap into the synchronistic nature of reality to accelerate our collective awakening. Enter the promo code PSR into your order to receive additional bonus buttons to your supply. Thank you again, and one love.